So I am actually, this is a very much of an aberration of my normal videos. I'm, I'm not doing a critique of a shower necessarily. I'm not doing a redo. This isn't a leaking shower. This is, again, an aberration from most all of my videos on my channel. And so what's going on here specifically, this is a homeowner who has decided he's gonna build his own shower. And he contacted me because he ran into this bit of a conundrum with his drain, and I'm gonna to get to that eventually, but I just kinda of wanna go over a little bit of detail on what he's been able to accomplish on his own, not ever having built a shower before. Um, so he used GoBoard, which is a um, pretty decent product. I don't particularly like it, only because uh, we got too many studs going on here. But when you get to between stud areas, you know, there's a little bit of flex. It's not a whole lot, but there's a little bit. But then the other part about it is because it's made up of a fiberglass material, if you have a t-shirt on like I have today, then you're going to be scratching for the next day and a half. Um, so really, that's the only reason I'm against it. Plus... Uh, I'm not I'm saying I'm against it. I just don't go for it all the time. Plus, it's about $18, $20 a sheet. If you can get it in Metro Atlanta, it's hard to come by. Um, but he did a pretty good job on matching it up with sheetrock. And he did all the directions that, you know, tell him that he must have the edges caulked together with their pr proprietary. Well, not their proprietary caulking. I think they allow for silicone also. Um, but, you know, all the fasteners are obviously sealed. And that's good. And so this is this is a waterproof wall going on here, 100% waterproof wall. Um, there's just uh, a little bit of boogering going on here <laughs> with the with the caulking and the red guard and all that stuff, which is not a big deal to me. But I know when I'm doing my work, I have to follow me, and following me and knowing how tile doesn't bend and manipulate and all that stuff, and how I have very little uh, manipulation with my thin set. Um, I'm just very adamant about getting things, you know, flush and square and all that stuff as much as I can. Which on a DIYer um, aspect, they, they're not really aware of that because they're not used to fighting tile and making tile work where it's supposed to work. On edges here usually is where I'm kind of battling myself trying to get these edges um, nice and straight. But overall it's not a bad job. He built a knee wall. By the way, this used to be a bathtub. And so this is a tub to shower conversion, quite wide as a matter of fact. I usually call a tub to shower conversion to me is a three foot by five foot. And it's nominal because it's, a tub's usually about 28 to about 32 inches. But this is literally three foot wide. So this is a nice expanse of shower from what he had before. And apparently what he had before was a jacuzzi tub that literally took up almost all this room anyway from left to right. And so to be able to get all this room in here and then put a knee wall on um, is wonderful. Like this is a huge shower. And then I guess where the fiberglass shower is behind it will go away and that's going to be shelving. Um, so getting rid of a tub, especially in a master bathroom, is not a bad thing. Um, if you only had one tub, that might be a different story, but um, I digress. We are now into the shower pan area proper. And he looks like he got a really, really good slope. I know there's a couple of levels around here somewhere. I think there's a small, a couple of small, there was one. It just magically popped up in my hand. So, he got a really, really good slope going on here. Um, one quarter inch per foot is what we're trying to obtain. <laughs> and it looks like if we had a longer level to go all the way this three foot area, um, we have a very, very profound slope going on. I think, you know, we got a probably a good part of an inch and a half of slope going on, um, which is okay. There's, there's really not such thing as too much slope unless you get into it and you, you know, fall on your butt. But um, it's not a bad situation going on. There's just a couple of little things going on that I, I wouldn't have done, but it's not my shower. One of the things that people get befuddled by is what do you do with the wrap of your pan liner when you get to the corner? So what I suggest doing always, always, always is pushing that pan liner back as far as you can and sticking it in some of your backer board, if you had real backer board, cement product, um, i.e. Dura Rock or Wonder Board, and you can shove that into that void. And I usually do it with a, either a dull chisel or a screwdriver or something because it's hard to push it in there. But I want to push it in there to push that excess pan liner back against the wall because there's nothing you can do about the double fold that's going on. 
And then when, when I'm screeding out my thin set around here, then that just gets filled in and it becomes innocuous. Um, so yeah, I would have probably done something like that in all four corners, which would have kind of mitigated these little push-outs. This one isn't too bad. But anyway, it's not, it's not awful. It's not an awful job. Um, like I said, the slope, you know, the waterproofing that was done and all that stuff, you know, is pretty much the same way I would do it. He raised his backer board um, based on watching my videos because it made sense so that when you have the floor tile, if you're watching my channel for the first time, your floor tile is sitting as flush as you can against your pan liner back here, and then your wall tile would overlap that. So just like so, and then you have that void. And a lot of people out there are kind of giving me a hard time about, well, you have this void, your water is going to seep back there, and you're going to have mold and mildew that's going to grow. And I'm like, well, if water got back there, it would be minuscule at best, because remember, you have this slope going on. It would be minuscule at best, and if water could get in there, water can get out. Back through the grout line that it came in, but also more to the point, because you have a void, and if you put a little bit of water in a cup, I guarantee the next day or the day after, that water is going to be gone. So I doubt very seriously that's going to happen, but that's the way that I prefer to do it when I'm dealing with a porous backer board. In this case, it's not porous. So if he wanted to, I would have had no compunction about setting his backer board completely on the pan surface, and or he could have embedded his backer board to take up for that little mm, fold of the corners. Um, and it wouldn't have bothered anything because this backer board is waterproof. Um, but, be that as it may, uh, that's enough of that. I'm going to get to the reason why I was called out here. Um, and I've run into this. This isn't the first time that I've run into this. This is what I'm looking at. And so, just forget this drain even existed for a minute. So, I'm looking at this hole that has been caused by... And, again, not the first time I've run into this that has been caused by people getting into their mind for whatever reason, I don't know why, that, you know, an hour, two, three hours after their pan has been poured, that they're going to unscrew their drain barrel, take it out, and allow themselves enough playroom to, when they get to the tile part, figure out where their drain cap is going to be in relationship to their tile, rather than the other way around. I'm already knowing the parameter of my tile when I pour my pan. So having my drain screwed exactly where I want it prior to any tile being put on um, is the way that I do it. Now my drain is completely anchored and encapsulated by the surrounding mortar that's around your barrel. And in a lot of cases, people have done this. They've taken out their drain barrel so they can then manipulate afterwards. And I don't um, I'm not sure why, but for anybody that proposes to do their own shower and do, do something like that, I don't suggest doing it. I don't know the reason for that. So the, the end of your drain barrel, the threaded part of your drain barrel, goes into the posing female threads of here. And so if you look in there, on almost all drain barrels on the inside of here, you're going to have little notch outs. And those notch outs are designed specifically if water gets in between your threads, that it can then drain completely into your drain, which is, that's the way it's supposed to go. Um, when you screw this down, right, so the barrel part is, is firmly inside, and if this pan wasn't waterproof and water got into that drain barrel area, then it's designed to have the water go into the drain. Same as those notch outs were specifically put there for that reason. There's no reason to not have them there. Um, so then there's no reason to be able to screw out your drain. I don't know if I'm making myself clear. Screwing out your drain doesn't do anything for you. If you take your drain barrel out, now is it not only not anchored, because now you're relying solely... These, this drain isn't too bad, but a lot of these drains have a little bit of play. There we go. So you can see it and hear it. And so that play is never anchored. It's only going to be anchored by the surrounding tile. And so this is counterproductive to anything that I would do, but um, for whatever reason they felt the need to make that happen, and so now the conundrum becomes, what do we do to anchor this down, and what are we going to do about this inside mortar? So he was concerned that he had too much mortar build up here, and I'm saying, no, you got about an inch, inch and a quarter, so that's about right. That's about where you need to be. Um, but that you unscrewed it, 
prior to any tile or anything is kind of weird. So now we have to go ahead and make sure that that's waterproof so they're not getting any of the water inside of there. Although it doesn't matter because, again, if you watch my videos at all, you know that once my, once my drain is in and my pan is poured, that's at a point where I use some white silicone. And the white silicone gets pushed inside of this gap, and this gap is pretty large. Mine isn't usually like that, but I have a round drain. Um, and so that white silicone gets pushed into that gap and spread out clearly with my finger pressing in and down so that I have a nice push of that silicone going on to my red guard surface. And then the next day when that dries up, then I overlap some red guard on top of the silicone. Now water cannot get into here at all. So now it makes everything below it kind of irrelevant to how it was done. But it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Another thing that I want to I want to mention, and I don't want to, uh, I'm not trying to embarrass uh, the homeowner here, but this is clearly an inch and a half drain, and all shower drains, 100% all shower drains are two inch drains, and so the P trap is sitting. You can see it. Well, I mean, maybe you can't see it, but it's sitting maybe about eight inches down off of the surface, and it shouldn't be eight inches down, or even if it was eight inches down, it shouldn't. So let me explain. This is a tub to shower conversion. The P trap is usually right below the back end of the tub, and the P trap is inch and a half, and it goes almost immediately and out where it goes. Um, when you do a transition to have a tub to shower conversion, the transition is usually created after the P trap, especially in a slab situation. But if I can, I'll get below the studs, the raptors, if you will. I'll get below there and I'll cut out that P trap and I'll put a two inch P trap, and that transition becomes there. And then usually it's pretty close to the Y that goes out of your house anyway, and that Y is going to be three inch or better. So it doesn't really matter. But either which way, now I'm coming, even directly with the P trap, I'm coming directly about 20, maybe 22 inches down this way with 190 coming up with a two inch pipe rather than the inch and a half he has. So what he's concerned about is that the, the P part of that trap is pretty close to the edge of here and if water backs up he could be in trouble and I'm suggesting that he's not in trouble first of all because the edge of here is probably three maybe four inches up which means your P trap is probably about two inches below that so I think you're good but by the time you get to that straight run but also you would have to have a backup and backups are very very rare on showers that's been a long time since I've seen one but I guess more to the point is, overall, this is, this is you know, for an amateur type of situation going on here without having ever built a shower and being a little bit perplexed, uh, some of the complexities of a shower. Um, this is a pretty good job. It's not something, um, if, somebody, <laughs> if somebody were to hand me their resume and say, hey, I'm ready to build showers for you, I want to go to work for you. Yeah, we need... Yeah, you're, well, you're not fired, but you need some retraining. You need a little bit of retraining. As I'm looking over here, because I keep panning back and forth, I'm seeing that that end is a little higher than that end, and that only bothers me slightly. That there's a pitch going down to the drain ultimately is your goal, but I'm just symmetrical. So if I'm low here, I want to be low here, or high there, I want to be high there, vice versa. And that's just me. But, like I said, you know, he, he was basically asking me if he has to start over again, or if he has to dig all this stuff out and start from scratch. And I'm like, no, you don't really have to do that. But again, a little higher over here, a little lower over there, that bothers me slightly because eventually we have to come in with a tile. And a tile is going to be, look, there it is, magically appears. A tile is going to be maybe an eighth of an inch of room for my thin set, whereas over here I got about a quarter of an inch of room for my thin set. So I want to be at a quarter inch here or better because I'm raising my tile above my drain slightly. Usually that's the way I do it. So that only bothers me a little bit. Um, so to the point that he was asking about redoing, you know, kind of chiseling out some of this area and redoing all this stuff, yes, you could do that. But you're not going to marry mortar with mortar again. I've just never been successful doing that. I think in this case, when he did it over again one time already, he used thin set to make that happen. Um, there is a quick setting uh, mortar that dries up. By the time you mix it, you have maybe 10, 15 minutes tops before it starts to get very hard. 
and solid and that's what I would use and I would probably wet the surrounding mortar first slap that in there and use a couple of putty knives to, to quickly get it to the slope that I wanted it and then once that's dry you can go ahead and red guard it again and it'll be done but I also like circular drains too which is another thought that I had um, circular drains make it easier for me to have my drain sorry to have my tile slightly above the drain and do my little taper cuts but I can't do that on a square drain because imagine if you had a cut to make here with a taper you're not going to get a, a double compound taper to look nice um, also Odie makes a couple of drains this is the cheaper end of it um, that's fashioned in there with just a couple of Mm, snap clips. Yeah, snap clip type of things. And I don't like that because, and it's very, very light. Um, it's just made out of plastic, where the other one is made out of a brass material. It's very heavy, and the drain cover itself has two screws on it, so you can take it off and all that stuff. So I like that, and that's what he's going to go back with, I think. Um, they're all retrofittable, so he can easily screw that one down. Um, lastly, um, he's concerned about how many threads are going to reach down there by the time he gets to the level he needs to be for the tile. So he's suggesting that three turns of this drain or possibly going up to maybe four at the tops is not enough to make it happen. And I'm saying that even if you had two rotations of this drain going into there, you don't need anything else. He's wanting to use caulking and or plumber's putty and or some other thing. And I'm saying, no, you want your threads to be clear. Same reason I mentioned the cutouts are there. Is for that reason, if water does get in there, it's not going to, given the fact that you're going to be doing all that caulking and all that stuff. But if it does, yeah, you want that to be free and clear. So that's not what you want to do. You don't want to add um, something else to the mix like that. But um, yeah, the way to fix this, the way I would do it, now I've clearly got about two or three turns on it, and you're about where you want to be with the tile. And that's the way I would go about doing it. So, um, like I said, I'm here on a consultation thing with the homeowner, and I think I think perhaps you know he feels better about going forward with making sure this doesn't have a problem in the future. So if there's anybody else out there that suggests that for whatever reason that they want to unscrew their drain barrel at a process where you're doing your pan, please don't do that. You're causing yourself more problems. Oh, and another thing, the last thing I want to say on this, this is an important piece of information to some of you guys out there. Oftentimes, I'll get people that want to put, um, this is a, a wood floor below here, and they want to put a piece of backer board, they want a piece of plywood, they want something on top of their subfloor, and I don't know why they want that. Typically, here we have three-quarter, five-eighths ply, and that's enough to handle 200 pounds of mortar, and it's not a big deal, but they just feel, for whatever reason, they want to put something on top of that ply, and I'm like, mm, why? For what reason do you want to do that? And they can't answer. They just feel it makes them like it makes them feel better about it or whatever. Then there's other people that feel like I don't know their process of setting the pan liner or the possible mistake might ruin their subfloor. They they want to put a tar paper down below and then put their pan liner on top of the tar paper. So the homeowner is telling me that he called Odie, who makes the pan liner, and they're telling him specifically not to use tar paper up against their pan liner because it is a petroleum product that tar paper is made out of and therefore after a time will eat away at that rubber membrane. And I, that's something honestly that I did not know and I would never have ever thought about putting tar paper down but if you have or you're going to don't do that. It would probably take years and years for that dissolve uh, action to happen on that rubber membrane but I'm just saying that's a piece of information. If you learn nothing else from this video at all, that is a good piece of information to know. Yep. So there you go. Um, you want to talk? I just wanted to say that this is Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> and I'm out and, here. And he did not have to come out here. And I just simply emailed him and sent him a notification that I had troubles. And... I am stressed to the max to get this thing done for my wife and I'd like to get it done. And he came out on a Super Bowl Sunday to help somebody like me to educate me and to help me to learn the process to get this thing done and not leak through my second floor basement. And I'm greatly appreciative for his time and he didn't rush me. 
He didn't do anything. He answered all my questions, and I am totally grateful for his efforts, his education, and his desire to help people like, like myself, who totally created a cluster. So <laughs> I just want to say thank you. And I didn't even pay this guy to say anything yeah. like that. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, he did pay me a little something for the consultation, but you know that goes that's part and parcel. Um, yeah, so know that a lot of these things that are on YouTube, not just my channel. I mean, obviously, he found me through through YouTube on my particular channel. But any of these things that you're going to do for yourself, know how they're put together prior to putting them together. Because by the time, oh, by the way, side note, this is a very and it's not a derogation to you or your method or anything like this. This is a very cheesy, ordinary ceramic um, tile that I have no use for whatsoever in my life or anybody else's life. Um, it's a difficult tile to work with. It's very difficult to set because once you get this backer wet, then the tile will want to slide off and all that stuff. Plus, it's kind of a slippery tile on top of that. But besides that, um, it's it's... It, of all the tiles out there, this would probably, except for penny tile, this would probably be the last one that I would put on anybody's floor, um, just because of the difficulty of working with it. Um, so I would suggest uh, just stepping up the game a little bit, paying a dollar more a square foot, and getting a little, little better tile than what's going on here. I think he has intentions of selling the house, so it doesn't really matter in the end. But you know, that's that's what I have to say about it. If you got anything from this, it's just like my homeowner just got through saying. Um, this is for information to be gleaned by whoever is watching this, and that's the reason I put out these videos, specifically why I put out these videos time and time again. And that's all I have to say. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're going to call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes my link to my paypal and my patreon account is down below and if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as i post videos and thank you very much for your support